Our God has many names. He is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Ra, Jehovah Sidkenu, and Jehovah Shama. He is Abba Father, Adonai, the Alpha and Omega, the Ancient of Days, El Elyon, El Roy, El Shaddai, Elohim, God Almighty, I am who I am, Yahweh, Lord, and Jesus. Jesus himself has many names, including Savior, Redeemer, Only Begotten Son, Lamb of God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Ruler of Israel, Emmanuel, the Good Shepherd, Son of Man, Physician, Branch, and Lion of Judah. Although his names are many, his nature is unique and distinct. Our God is infinite, immutable, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, wise, faithful, good, merciful, gracious, loving, holy, and glorious. Today I'd like to focus on the power of our God to transform our pain into purpose, our weakness into strength, our sin into salvation, and our choices into destiny. I'm sure you've heard of free will before. Most of us were likely introduced to this topic when we first learned of the rebellion of Satan and the fall of man. Free will is the ability to choose between different actions, paths, and outcomes. God grants us the ability to choose whether we'll serve and obey Him, whether we'll choose a life of blessings or curses, and whether we'll spend eternity with Him in heaven and in life, or separated from Him in hell and in death. Although the Bible doesn't discuss free will outright, it does as it pertains to the choices I just listed. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 through 15, outline our choice to serve the Lord. Now therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The book of Deuteronomy discusses our choice to obey God and the subsequent blessings that will follow if we choose to obey Him. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1-14. through 14. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl, Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses, and in all to which you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all peoples of the earth shall see that you were called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body and the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath, if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, 
to the right or the left, to go after other gods to serve them. In the next passage, Moses goes on to outline the curses that will come upon you, should you choose to disobey God. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 through 29. But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the country. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your land, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send on you cursing, confusion, and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do, until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly, because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the plague cling to you until he has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess. The Lord will strike you with consumption, with fever, with inflammation, with severe burning fever, with a sword, with scorching, and with mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish. And your heavens which are over your head shall be bronze, and the earth which is under you shall be iron. The Lord will change the rain of your land to powder and dust. From the heaven it shall come down on you until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them, and you shall become troublesome to all kingdoms of the earth. Your carcasses shall be food for all the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and no one shall frighten them away. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt, with tumors, with the scab, and with the itch from which you cannot be healed. The Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion and of heart. And you shall grope at noonday as a blind man gropes in darkness. You shall not prosper in your ways. You shall only be oppressed and plundered continually, and no one shall save you. I stop with verse 29, but Moses continues to describe the curses of disobeying God for the rest of chapter 28. He then goes on to discuss our choice between life and death in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 19 through 20. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. While God's punishment for our disobedience might seem harsh or extreme, the rewards for keeping his commands are eternal. This is because he always has our best interests at heart. In other words, he wants us to do what's best for us because he wants what's best for us. He wants to protect us. He wants to bless us. He wants to give us a future and a hope. God wants to turn our pain into purpose, our weakness into strength, our sin into salvation, and our choices into destiny. But we have to choose him. Before I go any further, I'd like to provide you with a few examples of people who chose to keep God's commands and highlight how he completely transformed their lives for the better. For instance, take Abraham. He grew up in a land full of idol worship, which he also partook in. In fact, his father Terah not only worshipped idols, but made them. Once God called him out of his land and lifestyle, however, Abraham no longer lived by tradition, but by God's instruction. God's first instruction to Abraham is listed in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Abraham listened to God's instruction. He left behind the land and customs of his family. He lived as a nomad with no tradition or idolatry caging him in. He worshiped God wherever he was led and built not idols, but altars to God. Because of Abraham's obedience, not only was he blessed by God, but God made him a blessing to the entire world. 
You can hear this in Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 through 17. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants could also be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. God poured out blessing after blessing over Abraham and his family's life, all because Abraham listened to him. How generous is our God that he abundantly blesses those who keep his commandments, when his commandments are already in our best interest. In other words, the reason he tells us to do or not do something is because he loves us and wants us to have good lives. That alone is a reward. But our God doesn't stop there. He rewards us for doing what is good for us. What a God we serve. Another example of God's transformative power is in the life of Joseph, the son of Jacob and great-grandson of Abraham. Joseph began having prophetic dreams about his own future, as well as the future of Canaan and Egypt when he was 17 years old. When he told his family about his dreams, he was ridiculed and treated with contempt to the point that he was thrown into a well and then sold into slavery. As a slave, he had no credibility. He didn't even have authority over himself. God took him from being an Egyptian slave to an Egyptian ruler, complete with autonomy, authority, wealth, and prestige, even over a country who betrayed his people and the brothers who betrayed him. Another example is Paul. God took Paul from being a law-welding persecutor of Christians to being persecuted by the law for being a Christian. It was through his persecution and imprisonment, however, that Paul was able to lead so many people to Jesus. Another example is Peter. God took Peter from an emotionally reactive young man who would resort to violence and even betray those he loved the most to save himself and transformed him into a Holy Spirit-filled, miracle-performing founder of the early church who obeyed Jesus' commands and fed his sheep long after his death and didn't betray him or his instruction or stray from his faith, even unto his own persecution and martyrdom. Another example is the Virgin Mary. God took her from a young, poor, nameless woman and turned her into the mother of the Savior of mankind, Jesus Christ. The final example I'd like to discuss today is you. If you're here listening to this message, it's because God led you here. And if he brought you here, he wants you to know this. Regardless of what you've been through, regardless of whatever setbacks, losses, pain, and persecution you've suffered, regardless of the mistakes you've made, the sins you've committed, and the wrong turns you've taken, God is still here. He's still with you. God wants to transform every aspect of your life. He wants to turn your pain into purpose, your weakness into strength, your sin into salvation, and your choice into destiny. And He will do these things for you, if you let Him. Provided you choose to follow Him and keep His commandments, He will transform every aspect of you and your life for the better of yourself and everyone else. So will you? Will you choose Him? He's always been waiting on you. He's always been waiting to do these things for you. He's always been waiting on you to come home. I'd like to end with Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him, and delivers them. I would taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you as saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. 
The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Thank you so much for listening. Please like this video and share with someone you think needs to hear it. Take care, God bless you, and I'll talk to you soon.